Hi, I'm Judy Munn at the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas. And my husband, John Perry, and I are getting ready for our um, wood firing. We do this every once every two years. We're going to start it on uh, this Saturday, which is the 7th, which is um, tomorrow. And, not, and we're going to start loading. We'll load the back and the middle tomorrow. And then on Sunday, we'll load the front and start the fire. And fire it all the Sunday night and all the way through Monday until we're finished. It could be anywhere from 17 to 24 hours, hopefully not 30 like we have had in the past. So um, anyway, then we'll let it cool on Tuesday and open on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, that's right. And um, so, and then it'll take a while to kind of clean things up and we'll have them for sale next year in April when we open. So what we're doing today is just a few sort of things that we're gonna do to prepare for the kiln. Um, we've done the, got the cone packs ready. My husband and I got the wood ready. He did most of the wood cutting, of course. And um, this was the, the biggest job. So what we're doing now, I've got, this is my last kiln shelf. Every, these are kiln shelves and they're ceramic. They're, you know, basically made of, of clay and other materials. And before we put them in there, we have to coat them with this material here, which doesn't look very pretty. It's kind of sloppy stuff, but this is um, flint and some wheat paste and a little bit of kaolin. And so we, we paint that on the, on the um, kiln shelf and this will protect the kiln shelf from all the wood ash that flies around in the kiln. So I put this on every one of them and we try and make it not come out to the edge or off the edge. So we don't want things to fall off little crispies onto the pots below. You don't, it doesn't have to look very pretty but it does have to kind of cover up the surface. This is to protect the kiln shelf as well as the pots. So there's that on there. Another thing we do to protect the pots is we put um, wadding. These are, these are little wad balls. And this is uh, kaolin flint and kitty litter. Another nice little combination. And so we put little wad balls on the bottom of each of the pots like this one. So if we have um, 400 pots in the kiln, that means we have to make 1,200 wad balls to put underneath the pots. This is a time-consuming activity. And so, so all we do when we do the wads on there is we take a little bit of glue and three wads. Now we glue it on there because a lot of times, once we put it in the kiln, we want to move it around. We'll find a different place for something to go. And um, it's a whole lot easier if it's the wads are glued on there. But you can see, this is a good example of what, why we do the wadding. This cup was put in the kiln, whoops, facing the fire. So this front part was facing towards the fire. Um, the glaze that's right here, I only glazed it to here, once the wood ash hit it, it made the glaze melt or flux, and it ran it all the way down the bottom here until it hit, um, it was going to go off the edge. If I had that right on the kiln shelf, it would have stuck on the kiln shelf and cracked the pot when we picked it up. But instead, it just meant the, the wad, it stuck to the wad, which, um, if there was a wad there, and we just ground it off. So we still have our cup. Another thing to do, this is a, another example, this is a, a pot that uh, has a lid on it. So we also have to wad all of the lids. And this, on this one, the, the um, wood ash ran right off the edge, right underneath the pot, the rim. And if we hadn't had the wad there, this lid would have been stuck on there. And some archaeologists 20 or 30,000 years from now could have dug it up and had a nice pot, but it wouldn't have been useful to anybody. So this is also, um, this is a good example of the flashing that happens in the firing. This pot went in with glaze just to here, on, uh, only in here, and all this color here, as well as on that, that bunny pot, the bunny pot, that was unglazed, but that's what the fire does, the microfine particles of wood ash do to the pots. So that's one of the reasons why we do the wood firing, because we really like that color that the wood ash gives to the pottery. So um, anyway, that's about all I've got to say for this 
little stash of work right now. And um, I hope you can come and see us next April. We'll be having a folk school in March. And um, you can look that up on the website. John and I both teach that, and we really enjoy having students. And we'll be opening hopefully in April. So come and see us next year.